All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with today's project. We are gonna be doing salt dough clay sculptures. So I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap the dough I already made. And if you need a recipe for that, I will attach a link to this video. However, it is very simple to make. It is, let's see, what did I use? Four cups of flour. This is half the dough, by the way, this is half. I used four cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one and a half cups of water. And this is approximately half, actually maybe just a little bit less than half. And it's very soft and pliable, kind of smells like Play-Doh. Um, the cool thing about this is it can actually be baked, it can be air dry and painted. So it's a little bit different than Play-Doh. Um, Play-Doh tends to crack and not be, um, able to be kept for very long, but this, when you bake it, becomes really hard. Um, a lot of people make ornaments out of it around Christmas time, um, but we're gonna make a piggy bank today with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide it in half, and I can either squish it in half like this, or really fun, I've got a couple of tools with me that are just common household objects. You can just cut it, that's so satisfying to do. Kind of feels like cookie dough. Um, and I'm just going to set that up there for now. All right, to make my piggy bank, I'm going to start with making a ball. And I've got a handy cup of water right here, ready, in case it gets too dry. Right now you can see it's pretty, pretty pliable. It's pretty, um, pretty moist, so it hasn't been sitting very long. All right, so I'm, I like to squish it around, make sure I get a good feel for it. So I'm gonna cut, let me see if I made enough. I'm gonna cut this one in half too. And I like to use the knife, that's so much fun. All right, so now I'm gonna do something, um, it's called a pinch pot. And I started, you can start with a ball um, or somewhat of a ball like that and then kind of flatten it into a disc and kind of pinch and turn as you go. So I'm pinching, I'm turning, I'm pinching and turning. You can see it's kind of turning into a bowl, kind of like I've pinched this into a bowl shape and I'm gonna keep going until it's a good size. I wanna keep it kind of thick. I don't want it too thin because then it's it'll break e too easily if it's thin. Okay, so now I've got, look at this, I've got kind of a deep bowl, and that's what I want. I don't want a wide bowl that's gonna stretch out like that. I want one that's a little bit deeper. So make sure you stick your thumbs in there and really push, push that down, or pinch the sides, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing with the second little ball of dough that I have here, and I'm gonna try and make sure that everything's even. You see some of these areas are a little bit wider, some are a little bit fatter. Try and get them, you know, kind of close, all the way around. Okay, and you can see I had a lot less dough in this one, in this little ball. So I'm gonna make it as much as I can, about the same size. And if I need to, I can smush this, start over and add some more which I think I might go ahead and do that because it's so much smaller. So look at that. It's okay if you mess up, just squish it and redo it. So you can see it's still just a little bit smaller. I'm not, apparently not very good at cutting things exactly in half, but that's okay. You don't have to be perfect to do good art. All right, so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna end up joining these two because you know most piggy banks are hollow, right? Okay. So what we're gonna do before we just try and stick them together is we're gonna do a little score and slip. And this isn't this isn't clay like dirt from the ground, but it still acts the same. So I have a toothpick right here. I'm just dipping it in my water, and I'm going to make little tears around the edge, just a little bit. Make sure it's wet, I keep dipping it in my water. So I'm just scratching up the edge, poking little tiny holes in it, so that when these stick together, they have 
kind of a rough surface to join together. Just makes it a little bit easier. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. All right. I'm gonna dip my fingers in, make sure the edge of this is really gooey. Same thing over here. Make sure the edges of this is really gooey. All right. Now, as best we can, we're going to try and combine these. It's okay if they're not perfect, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hold it like a baseball, like this. I don't want to squish my ball. I want to gently hold it, okay? And I'm gently pushing the edges around. And I'm going to use a tool to help me with this in just a second. But I want to make sure it sticks a little bit first. All right. So remember, don't squish the ball at this point. It's kind of it's kind of fragile, and if we just squeeze that ball, there'll be nowhere for our money to go in our piggy bank. So right here, look, I'm wetting, I'm wetting this edge right here. Wiping off my fingers on my apron. And then use what tools you have at home. You can use a spoon and kind of smooth this together. You can keep using your finger like this. Okay. You can also use a butter knife. I think that works very good. I'm going to slowly rotate this and it's going to get sticky. The more water I add, the stickier it's going to get. So just be careful. And I'm joining those two together. All right, I'm going to gently set this down. Remember, don't try your best not to squish your ball. It is fragile. It's going to try and collapse a little bit. See how it just kind of settles as I put it down? Just kind of shifts and does its own thing. That's okay for now. What I'm going to do is take some of this. That's why I set it aside. Saving it for later. I'm going to roll it together either in between my hands or on the table, whichever is easier. And I'm going to get a long strip. Okay. And you can see my ball is starting to fall apart a little bit. I might want to turn it while I'm doing this part so it doesn't totally collapse. And I'm going to smush this out so I have a thin piece. It's going to act like a band-aid. It goes all the way across. Okay, I just want to stretch it a little bit. See how stretchy this dough can be. And I'm going to put it on that seam like a band-aid all the way across. Okay, so now it kind of looks like a planet. I'm going to take my hands and smooth that out. Get some water on it. Try and get that nice and smooth. Don't squish your ball. See how I'm really flattening that? It's going to make it strong. Don't squish your ball. Keep rotating it in your hand. Rotate it. It's okay if it turns into an egg shape. Remember, we're making a piggy bank, so pigs are not perfect circles, right? All right, so now I'm gonna get a lot of water on my hand. And this is gonna get really goopy really fast. And I'm gently going to roll this around in my hand until it's totally smooth. Don't crush it, just, just kind of go like this with both hands and smooth that out. And you see, I've still got this seam right here that's pretty obvious. I might take my knife again. Right. 
Now it's going to get really sticky as it dries. So to avoid it being sticky, you can either let it dry for a while or just keep adding water so it's slick. Okay. And you see mine's very sticky. Got a lot of residue on my hand, but it's a pretty good egg size, not egg sized. Ooh, that'd be a giant egg. Ooh, egg shaped <laughs> ball. Right, it's very, very wet, so I gotta be careful not to um, drop it because it'll lose its shape. I'm just going to set it right there. You can see it still moves a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and make some feet for my little piggy bank. I'm gonna take some of this. I'm going to cut it in half. Now I have kind of like this flat part and this round part. This flat part right here. This round part on the bottom. It's kind of like two little cylinders. Those are some stocky feet. I might want them thinner. I kind of like them. All right, so look how my eggs kind of flattened a little bit on one side. I want to make sure I move it around a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take this. See that flat end right there, kind of like a marshmallow? Dip that in my water. It's already pretty rough, so I don't have to score and slip it. It's gonna get really sticky. I'm gonna put it right there. Don't push too hard. You'll move it a little bit forward. Remember, I'm using the flat side right here and here. And look, they're gonna to wanna to slide, so you might wanna do this one at a time. Put that one back. Use this. Do the same thing, kind of smooth it, or I can use my finger or a toothpick. I just want to blend it with what's already there. It can get a little tricky. So make sure your finger's wet and you move that around. If you use a knife, make sure your knife is wet. And if I think that the legs are too big, which they might just be too big, maybe, just maybe, I want to divide this right here very gently and make two feet. But then I kind of risk squishing my ball. I gotta be very careful about that. So maybe I wanna use a more gentle tool and kind of pry it apart. Just kind of go like this, very gently. Little feet. Maybe I want my pig to have little feet, and his feet are kind of right in the middle of his body. That's okay. Let's put this one right here. All right, my piggy's gotten a little squished, but now I can set it down. Kind of let those feet sink a little bit. Okay. Maybe fix this crack. See how this little crack started right here? Go back and smooth that out a little bit. It's okay. It happens. Don't squeeze your ball too much. Oops. I almost dropped my pig. Let him rest on his side for a second. So now I didn't even use these because I thought these giant marshmallow feet were too big. Use this. I'm going to use one to make the snout, and I'm going to use one to make the ear. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here for the snout. I want to make a ball. I can roll this in my hand or flat on the table. And then I kind of want to put it down and smush it a little bit with my finger. All right, let me see which is the pretty side. I think this might be the pretty side up here. I'm gonna put his nose right there. And what I'm gonna do is do that score and slip thing that I just talked about. Dip in my toothpick in here. Make sure it's wet. 
put some scratches on your dough, making sure it's very wet. Now pick the side you want to have your little piggy snout on. Go ahead and put it on there, give it a good smush. Not too hard, maybe a little pat, because we don't want to crush this belly on the pig. And you see how it's going to want to separate like that unless you blend the edges. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I have an old paintbrush right here. I'm going to make a little nostril hole here. I'm going to push really far. Make another little nostril hole, push really far. See how deep those nostrils are? Oof. Okay, so that should help it actually stick on there. If you have a lot of trouble, you don't have to blend the sides, but you could always put some toothpicks in here. Watch this. Hide some toothpicks in your pig. Whoa. And keep him stable. Now it just looks like he's got something stuck in his nose. But that could help him be a little bit more stable. It's up to you. You don't have to leave toothpicks in your poor little piggy. But if you've got them and you're afraid of that nose coming apart, stick some toothpicks in there. Make sure you push it down so you can't see them anymore. All right, so there's my little snout. My little piggy, my little piggy snout. All right, make sure he stands a little bit. If he's too wet, he's gonna wanna squish. That's what, that's what they do. They wanna squish. All right, so I can use a pencil. I can use an old paintbrush. I'm going to make an eyeball here and an eyeball here. Cute little piggy, cute little eyes. I can go like this. I can feel that it's still hollow, which is awesome. Yay. That means he didn't get too squished, even though, look, his feet are flattening out by the weight of his body. So maybe he wants to rest on his side for a minute. You really got to play around with this. It's kind of a game. Don't let the center of the body get squished. You got to keep him moving. All right, so for this one... I'm going to take this, this one that we had left over, and take it apart. So now I'm going to make a triangle, and I want it pretty flat. So what I can do is use this and make a flat edge here, make a flat edge over here while I push down. Kind of looks like a pizza slice, huh? Look at that. Push it on the sides as I push down, kind of making a triangle. So for this one, whoopsie, look how he got flat on that side. Uh-oh. Maybe I'll just pat him a little bit. Get that side get that side going again. I'm gonna actually dip the, the fat end of this triangle in the water. Put it right here. And your pig's ears can flop any way you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it right there and smooth out the back of his ear so it sticks. Oh, there you got most of your piggy. See, look, his feet get squishier and squishier. That's okay. I like my pig with little squishy feet. I think it's adorable. But maybe I want his ears to flop in like this. So cute. Maybe I want to smooth it out. It's got a little crack there. Look at that cute little pig. Oh my goodness gracious. So cute. And his nose is a little crooked. I can fix that. Cute little piggy. One little ears, a little rogue, sticking straight up. It's okay if he gets a little floppy. Just try and correct him a little bit, or maybe you want to prop him up on something. Okay. Let him smooth, and then you make the slot. Now with the slot, you can either use your knife, your toothpicks, whatever tool you want. I'm going to use a knife and go straight down. And wiggle back and forth. And if it's dark black, you know that it's still hollow, which means you can keep a coin or two in there. Look at that. Make it big enough for a coin to fit through. 
And there's my cute little piggy bank. Oh, his feet have gotten all squished and adorable, and he just kind of wants to sit there. But, and he's so cute. Look at that. That's with salt dough. So I'm going to let him dry, and we're going to see what he looks like once he's all dry. Okay. I'm going to leave him here, make sure that's a little bit more open. And I'll come back once he's dried a little bit. I am going to bake him, so we'll see how he turns out. Okay, as you can see, this is fresh out of the oven, and I have my paintbrush here just as a pointing tool. So what I did was I baked this for uh, one hour at 325 degrees. Now, for kids who are doing this, make sure that you're doing um, any sort of baking or using any sort of uh, kitchen appliance with adult supervision only. I don't want any of you guys getting burnt, so make sure it's with a family member. Um, an adult, whoever is responsible in that house, don't do it by yourself. Make sure that you are baking safely. All right, so I'm just checking out some of the things. I want you guys to see some of the clues to know that this is totally dry, ready to go. Um, I'm going to hold him up. Look at how cute his face is. So he is really fresh out of the oven. Very, very, very hot. Okay. And the reason why we bake it is so that it gets hard. Okay. It's so not just so that it gets hard, so that all the moisture comes out of it. So I want you guys to hear, I want you to listen to this sound. Okay. And that's that scraping noise that you guys hear is really that that hard, that rock hard um, texture that you're looking for. Okay, so some of these parts probably either need to cool or keep drying um, if it's wet or gooey anywhere, which mine isn't wet or gooey, but the darker areas like under the ear here is probably a little wetter. And I'm gonna flip him over. Keep in mind he's hot, ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, so his feet totally disappeared. That's okay though. It's okay if his feet disappear. Um, he's just going to have a smooth belly. Well, smooth that. She still has some cracks. But I'm going to paint over those, and you won't see him because he'll be on his belly pretty often. So one of the other things is I forgot to add a tail in the video. So I added one last minute, and then just to hold it in place, I put a toothpick in there just to make sure it would stay. So that's the little piggy bank. I'm going to let him cool off a little bit longer, and we'll come back to paint him. Alright. Okay, so my pig is completely cooled off. It's completely dry. Um, doesn't have any wet spots. Now I want you guys to take a look. Some of the areas like on this ear have cracked. Um, that happened before baking. It was when I didn't smooth it out with the water like I should have. Um, and of course, you know, the feet did disappear. He's got a little bit of some feet on the side there, but they totally went inside and, um, disappeared, but at least he's got his little coin slot still and he's cute and he's ready to, to be painted. So for this process, you can use whatever, um, kids acrylics you have at home or kids paints. I know Crayola has some wonderful uh, metallic paints and tempera paints that kids can use. Um, I'm just using a regular old acrylic paint. And at the very end, after I paint this, um, I can choose to seal it and make it waterproof. So I have a couple of things. And let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this. So I have something called glazing medium. I could use this. You can also use Mod Podge, anything that's going to be glossy to put on top. Or you can use something like a gel medium to put on top. Now that one's matte, which just means it's not glossy. Um, so I'm probably going to do something that's glossy on top. Just to show off what I got there. And I think the camera had a little bit trouble focusing because I had too much going on on this um, yeah, it just decided not to focus. Anyways, but after I paint it, I'm going to use something like Mod Podge or a glazing medium to um, seal this, make it waterproof, make it last forever. So I'm going to paint my pig. I chose pink just because it's cute. It's a cliche. Um, that's what I want my piggy bank to be. But you can paint your pig whatever you want. It can be, oh, and I got a little 
brush hair in there already. It's not the best quality brush that I have here. You know, sometimes you got to use what you got on hand. That's what I have. So I'm using a rather big brush and covering the pig all the way. I'm going to leave the bottom part for very last. I'll let the top dry before I even touch the bottom of this. So I'm probably going to speed this up so you don't have to listen to me talk about this pig. Um, so here we go. All right, at this point, I'm going to set all of my things aside, you know, make sure I clean my very dirty paintbrush off. Um, at the very, very end, I'm going to set all of this aside and I'm going to let my pig dry so that I can flip it over and do the underside. 